As Germany collapsed after World War II, teams from the Allied forces, the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union, raced to capture key German manufacturing sites and technology. Werner von Braun and over 100 key V-2 personnel surrendered to the Americans. The Germans who were captured were placed on the original V-2 team and ended up working at the Redstone Arsenal. Redstone Arsenal is a United States Army post adjacent to Huntsville in Madison County, Alabama, United States. Originally it was a chemical weapons manufacturing facility during World War II, but post-war it became home to the German rocket scientists that were brought to the United States as part of Operation Paperclip. The team first worked on ballistic missiles starting with the V-2 rocket derivatives before moving on to a series of even larger designs. Many of their tests were carried out at White Sands Missile Range and flights between the two locations were common. The German design team was then spun off to become part of the newly founded NASA. So yes, NASA was formed by a bunch of Nazis, but the purpose of this video is to analyze the photographs taken by the V-2 rockets, so let's get back on track. The V-2 rocket had become the first man-made object to travel into space by crossing the Kármán line on June 20th, 1944. The U.S. had captured enough V-2 hardware to build approximately 80 of these missiles, and therefore 80 experiments were performed between 1946 and 1951. As a result, the first photos of Earth from 40, 70, and 101 miles altitude were taken. What they seen was described as a vast panorama running from central Wyoming deep into Mexico. You can see if an engineer sat down and did the math, at 70 miles altitude on a spherical Earth, you should be able to see for 747 miles to the horizon. Since they didn't have any previous images of Earth at this height, they just assumed they were seen from deep Mexico into central Wyoming because that covers the calculated 747 mile distance to the horizon line. However, now that we have Google Earth with airplane or satellite imagery, let's compare the V-2 rocket photographs with current photographs to test their claim of being able to see for 747 miles. Here I've put the camera to a height of 70 miles in Google Earth and moved above White Sands Proving Ground in New Mexico. We'll position the camera so it has approximately the same angle as seen in the V-2 rocket's photograph. Okay, so here we can see that number 22 is listed as Wyoming uh, because way up near the horizon they must be seen up all the way into Wyoming. So they've numbered 22 here They've given it the name Wyoming. Uh, presumably, uh, it would be this area right here. And I've rotated that image 90 degrees. This one you can see is just rotated 90 degrees to the left. And we know that 22 here is Wyoming. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to Google Earth. And now we can easily see the one image to the next and compare to see if we're looking at Wyoming. And to make sure that our 70 mile elevation is correct, let's go ahead and look back here and see that the seven photographs in the composite were made from a rocket at 70 miles altitude. And again, 22 is Wyoming. Okay, so we're at 70 miles altitude. As we could see, there's the white sand desert. We could see the lava bed here. And then uh, moving up into this area, you have Albuquerque, which would be just over here. And, uh, you know, moving up from there, you have this dark area. So up here, the dark area. And the uh, second larger dark area above that, okay, which we could see right here. And off to the right, you have this uh, dark area. And it looks like there were some clouds over there, but you could see the dark area here. And right in the middle would be the 22 mark uh, basically where the mouse cursor is right here is the 22 mark now that hand is on the border of New Mexico and Colorado I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to Google Earth here so 22 that they've marked as Wyoming is actually right here it might still be in New Mexico it might not even be in in Colorado at all but if anything it's the border 22 is the border of New Mexico and Colorado I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out now 
and uh, fix the camera's angle so that we could see down here. And of course you're going to notice that what we were looking at is this area which is the New Mexico and the Colorado border. There's no way that this image is looking all the way into Wyoming uh, when 22 represents the border of New Mexico and Colorado, this area right here. And with 70 miles being 369,000 feet, we could see at an altitude of 369,000 feet, we should be able to see for 747 miles, which would stretch from the White Sands Desert, of course, 747 miles is going to be more than halfway through the state of Wyoming. And so it's easy to understand why they went ahead and said that we could see this far and they've labeled 22 as Wyoming because they think that they could see all the way into Wyoming but we could see that they are definitely wrong and looking at the distance that they could actually see at a 70 miles altitude we're going to go from the White Sands Desert and they seen right to around here which is a 300 mile distance which comes up far shorter um, I could see that they could see farther than 22 uh, so there is some distance from here to the horizon I would assume that from here to here they could see some of this area maybe all the way across this so let's go from the White Sands Desert all the way past that area which would represent where the horizon line is at up here where it goes to black and that's 350 miles uh, which again comes up far shorter of the 747 mile distance calculated by spherical trigonometry so while it's a bit of a stretch to call them liars because they had no frame of reference no image to look at uh, they certainly were wrong in assuming that they could see for a distance of 750 miles and assuming that 22 was Wyoming because it's not it's barely the state border so once again NASA and the spherical earth have failed to describe these inconsistencies that we find and when you get into atmospheric refraction specifically terrestrial refraction it's easy to understand why our vision is limited and it has nothing to do with the curvature of the earth and it doesn't prove the earth to be a sphere either.